Well, it's Andrew with a million dot bike. I see a lot of similar questions out on the internet that fall into the, I did my first gravel event. It didn't go well. How do I fix it? My first gravel race was exactly like that. It was one of the most demoralizing things I've ever done on a bike. I did not want to repeat that. So I put a huge amount of effort into figuring out how to fix the things I can fix. We're going to talk about a couple things that made a huge difference for me. I think it's likely that it will help you too when it comes to fitness and fueling. This is very much intended as a starting point, not an end point. This is not intended to be comprehensive, especially on the training plan side. And we are not going to talk about tactics. As we all know, I have not figured that out yet. Before getting to that, if anyone has a question, send it in. Nutrition, bike maintenance, training, whatever. It's great to understand where the pain points are. If I can answer it, I will. If I think it's useful to a broader audience, I will make a video or a blog post. I've been trying to be better about turning the questions I get that people send to me personally into resources that the broader community can make use of. I am happy to make this kind of thing a more regular thing. Let's get to it. The primary hurdle in gravel is rolling resistance. Even tucked in in a group, you need to keep pushing the pedals to overcome the watts that gravel sucks out of your tires. If you only ride on tarmac, this is going to be very different. On the road, I can hide in a fast group in zone one all day long. You need to change your plan to train your body to recover in high zone two, grow your high aerobic capacity, your zone three, four, and deal with those anaerobic bursts, all without real recovery. There are two workouts that I really like to address these problems. I do a few variations of the first type of workout. They all pivot around the same three minutes, recover one minute on principle with no real recovery in the mix. Basically, it's a 10 minute ramp up from zone one to zone three, then three minutes, one minute, three minute, one minute, repeat, then four minutes of ramp down from zone two to zone one for 60, 90, 120, or 150 minutes total duration. The only time you touch zone one is at the beginning and end. The three minute intervals can be either high zone two or low zone three, and the one minute intervals can be high zone three or low zone four. Mix it up based on how much you wanna suffer the first time you do this, it should be demoralizing. It gets easier, your body will adapt, it never gets easy. But you are grinding out a huge endurance reserve. The second type of workout are hops. The basic layout of the workout is the same. Ramp up, beat on yourself with no recovery, ramp down. The hop intervals are 15 seconds at 140% of FTP, and then 105 seconds at 75% of FTP. Repeat for duration. The other hurdle is nutrition and hydration. This is something I get a lot of pushback over and I don't understand why. Don't be afraid to eat or drink on the bike. In the days leading up to the race, set yourself up to have an energy surplus. It is difficult to eat enough during an event to offset the caloric cost unless you are riding at a very low power. Reducing your caloric deficit improves your performance in the event and speeds recovery. Let's do some quick math to demonstrate the point. The basic formula to calculate energy consumption is watts times time in hours times 3.6. This does not include your BMR or the calories you burn just to keep alive. It's just the bike part. So if you ride at 150 watts for three hours, it costs 1,620 calories or technically KCAL, but that doesn't really matter. And it doesn't really matter if your body is 24% or 25% efficient. That's all noise because the concept holds no matter what. It does not matter if we're off by a little bit here. There are four calories per gram of carbohydrate. Divide 1620 by three to get back to hours. Then we get 540 calories per hour. Now divide that by four to get our carbs per hour target. In this case, the number is 135 grams per hour. That's a big number. If you average 200 watts for those three hours, your new target is 180 grams per hour. The longer the race, the larger the deficit. Looking at my Dust Bowl experience, is a little over 100 miles, a little over five hours. That was 4,275 calories burned or 213.75 uh, grams per hour. 
As far as I know, that is not an achievable target to eat on the bike. That difference has to come off your body. That number does include the BMR, but that makes sense. Those are also calories burned. The larger you are, the harder it gets as well. 200 watts is 2.86 watts per kilogram for me. If you're 80 kilogram or 176 pounds, 2.86 watts per kilogram is 229 watts. You can see where I'm going. It's just math. Part of how you deal with that is by preloading carbs in the four to five days leading up to the event. Make it a priority. Then take in two to three grams per kilogram of body weight and carbs in the two to three hours before an event. That might take some getting used to. Before my last race, I ate or drank around 200 grams of carbs on the drive over. Take in as much as you can during. That might require some gut training. To figure out your target, look at your last race or something comparable. Divide the total calorie by hours. Take that number and divide by four. That is your baseline carbs per hour target. If you have a power meter, that number is going to be fairly accurate. If you don't, and it's based on heart rate, it's still okay, but just be aware that it's not as accurate. If that number is more than 60 grams an hour, which it probably is, start at 60 grams an hour and work towards that number. Most people can do 90 grams an hour without any gut training. Uh, I have a detailed article on the site around the different types of carbs. You don't have to worry about all that if you're 60 grams or under per hour. You do as you move up past 60. Training your gut is just another kind of training. You might need to work on it to get to 90. You might need to work on it to get past 90. When you get over 100, 110 grams an hour, how far you can push it is likely to be a personal thing. In my last race, I consumed 125 grams an hour. I prefer to drink my nutrition, about a one liter per hour. So I use table sugar and table salt in my bottles. Sugar is the optimal ratio, it's super cheap, and you can buy it pretty much anywhere, even most gas stations. You don't have to drink it. Some people actually prefer to eat things. That's totally fine. Try to keep the food simple though. Minimize the fat, fiber, and protein in the mix, especially as you scale up intake. Those things slow digestion and they cause gut issues. Many times when people struggle to take in nutrition or experience problems with stomach upset, uh, gas, or diarrhea, it's because of those unwanted things, not because of the carbs themselves. I hope that helps. Uh, feel free to downvote me in the comments. Thanks.